In today's tutorial, we will be making this uh, simplified watercolor scene. The reference for this particular scene is taken from a Facebook page called Painting References. There are a lot of references available. You may please check out. Hi friends, I am Vanidas Mangathil and let us learn watercolors together. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe and press the bell notification so that you get notified whenever I release a new video. Without further ado, let us get into the tutorial. As mentioned at the beginning, I have used a reference for this from a Facebook page called Painting References. I will be putting a link to the reference in the description below. Please check it out. So the drawing here is very simplified not very accurate. I, mean, I just wanted to capture the essence of the subject and in a, in a simplified loose way. Okay, so you can please check out the references and you can probably uh, cross check it with my drawing approach. As I, as I am, uh, my approach is always that uh, I don't go for precise drawing but while simplifying the subject I think it is important to retain the the perspectives in place so the perspectives should be uh, kind of uh, convincing it should be uh, it should be paid attention to and the details we can avoid you don't need too much of details okay so details can be avoided but capture the big shapes and try to retain the identity of the subject and also pay attention to the overall perspective of the subject that is important I am using a watercolor paper, cold pressed watercolor paper, 300 GSM and uh, I am using a graphite pencil, maybe around uh, 2B or so. I mean it is not a 2B pencil, it is actually an, uh, uh, just a graphite pencil but it is reasonably dark. The brand pencil that I am using is Artline Black Beauty. I have sped up uh, the video by two times that means uh, we are playing the video at 2x speed okay right so at some places I am taking a little bit more time on the drawing okay I think we, we are pretty much done with the, the drawing aspect of it mm -hmm. Um, some suggestion for trees, the build, uh, the kind of structures, uh, we have captured them pretty okay. okay. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, there is a scooter uh, in the reference, so let us uh, capture that also. This again is a very simplified kind of a drawing, okay. Everything is simplified, I am only worrying about the, the big shapes of it. I think it is it is uh, okay right mm. anything else I think we are pretty much done okay mm. uh, maybe maybe I will add some figures okay some fi because in the reference there is uh, I don't think there is any figure so uh, there is no figures in the reference so let us add some figures from our side to make it little more lively. See, adding these tiny figures can make it make a lot, bring lot of improvements to your your watercolor sub scene, landscapes and streetscapes. Okay, maybe a guy sitting here. I think I think we'll we'll stop the drawing at this point. Okay, I don't want to add anything more, and let us take the color now. I am using little bit of paints grey and orange because it is uh, this roof looks like a mix of uh, warm greys and cool greys sort of a color so it is mainly paints grey, orange and cerulean blue sometimes cobalt blue various blues it doesn't really matter too much because I am not precisely going for the color in the reference but just trying to get some sort of a representation. 
some burnt sienna. It looks a little bit too much sort of a warmer color, reddish color maybe. And again, it is uh, it is not a precise wash. Okay, so I am kind of looking for uh, some sort of uh, mixing of colors on the paper itself. Okay, so let the colors bleed into one another and create some sort of a uh, interest. Okay, paints gray and little bit of burnt damper and burnt sienna. I mean, these colors are mixed. I am leaving the white space for the figures uh, so that they get some contrast later. I think reasonably the structure has the initial layer. Let us form the ground now. Okay. Leaving the space for the scooter and let us make the ground. It is mainly sort of a burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of red. Okay. And let it sort of bleed, wet on wet, not wet on wet, the paper is dry actually, but I am allowing the colors to mix on the paper. I haven't uh, wetted the paper, I didn't pre-wet the paper, uh, it's a dry paper on which I, am do I have started with. Okay, some, some sort of darker color, paints grey, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of orange. See, these are some sort of suggestions uh, uh, at the far end. Okay, there are some elements the, in the reference. I just wanted to represent it with uh, some darker brushworks merging into the the wet ground. So it is a kind of uh, uh, wet on wet merging to create some sort of uh, uh, illusion of that area being busy. Okay. I think I think that is that is good enough and let us add some shadows under the roof I, I, I the paper is reasonably dry now so let us soften the edges okay I'm just focusing on the on the reference and trying to kind of represent it uh, using bold brushworks. As I told, we are not going for very realistic approach. Okay, it is a kind of a uh, simplified representation. Yeah, I think that will do the time being we, we will add little bit of details uh, further let us there's a kind of a dustbin sort of a thing there uh, a waste basket or whatever you call it i'm using cerulean blue and some cobalt blue and some touch of paints gray for darker tones and everything is i mean mixed on the paper dragging some lifting out some of the colors to create a 3d feel of it and now let us go for the sky it's uh, mainly cobalt blue okay and diluting it little bit for some tone variation color variation it is actually tone variation same color let us make the initial uh, color for the sky I am using a, uh, I am using small mop brush and synthetic round brushes and liner brushes throughout this painting. Uh, initially, I used uh, some mop brushes. See where where I wanted larger washes, I used a small uh, mop brush, and uh, for reasonably big washes, I am using big round brush, synthetic round brush. And for smaller details, I am using either smaller round brush or a liner brush. Okay. See, the sky area is still not dry, so you will find that the the edges are very soft. It is softly merging onto the paper because the sky is still wet. Okay, that that gives some interesting result. Again, it is very simplified approach. Okay, large washes. 
with soft edges. Some of these uh, top edges could have been softer. Maybe we will make it soft later. See the background foliages, let it sort of, uh, sort of merge there. Splashing some water to create some texture. Okay, some softening of the edges maybe. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that will do. Now we need, it, it should be dry now, I mean it is, uh, it is dry now. Once it is dry, I am um, suggesting uh, some tree trunks, okay. I am using smaller round brush for now, synthetic round brush. And uh, I am using, I am switching to a liner brush because I wanted some thinner lines for the smaller branches maybe. And yeah, another tree here, big, I mean, I mean, medium size round brush and it is darker in color, the tones are darker. See, for the darker tone, I primarily use paint is gray, paints gray and little bit of burn sienna. Okay, um, uh, some, in some of the areas, the, the palette could not be captured, but the, for the darker colors, I am using paints gray and burnt sienna. And switching to liner brush for finer small branches. Again, all our suggestions, nothing is very precise. Now some uh, mix of uh, olive green and I am using side of my brush for larger shapes and tip of my brush for uh, finer shapes, uh, smaller shapes. Okay. Basically it is olive green and little bit of yellow ochre, maybe little bit of burnt sienna uh, for some tonal, tone variations. Okay. I am using side of the brush and tip of the brush. I mean, I am switching to side of the brush for larger brushes and tip of the brush for smaller details. Okay. I think we are pretty much done with the foliages. Okay, as I told, it is uh, speed up twice as fast as the original, I mean speed, 2x speed. Now what I am doing is simple, I mean suggestive details. I am not precise here. Please don't mistake it, mistake it for precise details. I just wanted some sort of details on the rooftops and on the structure and that's it. So for the darker tones again I am using paints grey and uh, paints grey and uh, burnt sienna. Okay. Some of the darker, the doors and I am little careful about the figure there. See, darker tones are very important. Darker tones gives a lot of definitions. It gives, it creates a lot of interest, okay. I think we need to give some orangish kind of a tone. Uh, that, just for some interest, okay. I'm, I frequently smudge the colors on paper using my finger because that gives interesting result. smudging with my hand. I mean, if you are not uh, happy doing it, please don't do. But I, I find it very, very helpful, very useful uh, technique. Just smudging. Alright. If you are finding this tutorial useful and uh, if you are uh, if you are, if you think you are able to learn something from this, please do subscribe to my channel and press the bell notification. And uh, if you have any questions or suggestions or feedback, please write them into the comment box below. I uh, will be more than happy to get back to your questions as early as possible. See here there are a lot of details on the, on the reference. But I don't want to do that. I just wanted some kind of a tonal variations on the roof. So I'm just suggesting some light green, greenish kind of a color. 
somewhat same as the the foliage color and it, please don't think that it is a precise representation i always say that it is just like i mean it is a kind of uh, a very simplified uh, version i mean it is my own narration of the subject okay this area is slightly i mean bluish gray wash okay because i i wanted it to be like the shadow on the roof there is a kind of a ladder in the reference so i am just suggesting some ladder using dry brush works using liner brushes okay this again is very suggestive not precise now for the scooter it is white in color but we cannot keep it uh, paper white so i am using a very lighter tone very pale wash of uh, maybe violet or so bluish violet very pale wash okay and maybe it is little too dark i will lift the colors up to some time okay now while <coughs> the the scooter i mean takes some time to partially dry before lifting out let us work on the figures i am using some sort of a uh, i mean turquoise kind of a color there and violet color for the other figure sorry if you are getting some background noise uh, i don't have a soundproof facility for the recording okay so tiny figures small figures and if you are finding difficulty in uh, drawing figures i have lot of uh, previous tutorials suggesting uh, simplified figures tiny figures please go through those okay now lifting out the colors for the scooter and let us do give some definitions for the darker tones okay right yeah i have used a smaller brush for this you could use a slightly bigger brush and save some time there and there are some darker tones for the bottom area of the scooter uh, it looks uh, reasonably okay but i am not happy with the white color of it maybe let us see if uh, we need to change it right some sprinkling splashing of colors for some texture and yeah some touches here and there to kind of engage the area okay it shouldn't no area should look blank so some kind of a texture suggestion tonal variation uh, will be helpful now this is orange watercolor directly taken from the tube without diluting and used to suggest the exposed body part like face neck and the hands arms etc there is something in red color on the on the scooter tail lamp etc but i am not happy with it i think i will i will probably uh, have to change it maybe we will color it entirely in red then we'll make it as a red color scooter okay it is again a, a suggestive representation not very detailed okay i think that is it that is that is fair enough and we can treat this as mainly done some highlights with white watercolor directly taken from the tube see that will kind of separate the figures from the background for example some whitish highlights some kind of additional contrast it will give and it is pure watercolor chinese white watercolor shade and all the colors that i have used for this are uh, i mean camel artist quality watercolors except i think for one of the figure i used some other brand where the turquoise kind of a color is there yeah i think this is okay and let us add some shadows and finish it 
so i hope uh, you found it informative and useful thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions comments or feedback please do write them into the comment box below and once again please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done and uh, please share it to your friends and artist uh, artist friends uh, so that it gets it could be useful for them also i mean uh, they may also find it useful so thank you very much once again and uh, we'll soon see you in another interesting tutorial bye bye